I want to dedicate this sermon to my wife. And thank you, Pastor Jerry, for allowing me to preach today. Because we, on Wednesday, celebrated our 53rd wedding anniversary. So I dedicate this sermon to you. Who should get 53 medals? But I take the credit. And I give her the cash. So... It's a fair deal. My text, John chapter 2. Very familiar. Pastor Watson, your sons and wife and family, I am true to see you, but I'm shivering in my boots when I, I have a good preacher sitting there and the others. So, John chapter 2. I read the... Common story with uncommon remarks. And on the third day, the third day is very significant in Scripture. Good things happen on the third day. There was a, a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus was called and some of his disciples to the marriage. Point to note. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto Jesus, they have no wine. Point to note. Jesus said unto her, Madam, respectful term, lady, what have I to do with you at this moment? My hour is not yet come, point to note. The biggest and best recommendation ever given is now. These were the last recorded words of Mary. And his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. You think Nike is had it anywhere? He had it long before Nike. Just do it. Tell, tell your neighbor, just do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone. Just to give you an idea of what they could look like. Well, the light will not, it's okay, don't do that. But this is how a rich uh, house would have on their staircase six water pots. I could go into the explanation for the different water pots, not necessary, except that the first water pot was uh, called the vessel of honor, and the last water pot was called the vessel of dishonor. And they would keep dumping water into it so that fresh water is always available to drink. And the last one, you wash feet and Hygiene purposes and so forth. So we're not getting into uh, the water pots, but just like you get an idea of what. It. And they have excavated water pots from Cana, and they look just like that. So there were set there six water pots of stone. After the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece, some. Measurements differ from 120 gallons to 162 gallons. It could be anywhere there. Now, that's a lot of water. Uh, I want you to notice that this is the most unique miracle you'll find in everything that Jesus did. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. I think I can do that. Pastor Dominic, can you come and fill this? It's real water. He said, fill it.
well. He did it right. I didn't instruct him what to do. But hear what Jesus said. And this is the point I want to make. And Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to where? That's the point I want you to hear. That's why I'm demonstrating this. Some people are half filled. But when God wants to bless you, he wants to bless you to the brim. And when it gets to the brim, we'll talk about it. Yes. How is your water pot? How is your being? And as soon as they did that, he said unto them, draw out, bear, take it to the governor of the feast. The governor is usually the wedding planner. And they took it to the governor. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it came, now, this, is, this ain't no magic, okay? This ain't no magic. And I'm not turning water into wine. But the servants knew. How quickly. I'm showing you how quickly water could turn into something else. Just like that. And the governor said, every man at the beginning that set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, the cheap wine. But you've kept the good wine until now. I am saying unto you that some of you, God, have kept the good wine for you up until now, until today. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. A strong text is this. The beginning of miracles that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory there. My topic Change is an inside job. The problem with today's people is that we paint the outside and fail to remodel the inside. Many people are pretty on the outside but ugly on the inside. I'm sure you know somebody like that. Topic, change is an inside job, and this whole passage is about change. And my theme, if there would be one, is he wants to change your story from worry to glory. So he can take your worry and manifest his glory and take you a little higher. This is not talking about the bad, taking the bad and making it good. It's about taking the good and making it better. God wants a better life for you. Oh, you say I'm good. Well, that's wonderful. Stay right there. But I want what God has for me, a better life. And so if you want that, you can have that. I was to show you. God gets no glory in poverty. I am not preaching prosperity. That is a biblical thing too. But I am saying if you can't pay your bills, and if you can't make your month 
bills and whatever you have to pay uh, because you're trying your best. You're even working two jobs, but you can't. God does not want you to live that way. It's not that you squandered. It's just that you can't make it. And God has something better for you. Tell your neighbor, God has something better for you. He delights in the prosperity of his servants. You take care of God's business and he will take care of your business. That's a guarantee. And God wants to manifest his glory in your life. Let's get back to the text. The third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Notable mention, both Jesus was called, uh, was invited to, to the marriage. And here I'm going to tell you married people, or you're going to get married. The best person to invite to your wedding is Jesus Christ. And you will find out soon why. Because of all your natural stuff, one day, no matter how good you have it, some things are going to run out. And when it runs out, you got to know who to run to. And that's part of the problem. You, you run to the pastor who is as helpless as you are. I am glad that there, there is somebody bigger than us that we can run to in times of distress, in times of worry, and in times of embarrassment. What's the difference between a wedding and a marriage? The wedding is merely a ceremony. A marriage is the beginning of a lifelong partnership between two people whom God have joined together. I bless your marriage today with the presence of Jesus. Jesus was social. He didn't just go and break up funerals. He attended weddings too. And so, we have to invite him in the bad times and also in the good times. You just can't use him conveniently. He must be on the both sides of the coin in our lives. So Jesus was, was the invited God began his miraculous work after the sixth day of creation by performing the first marriage in the garden. Jesus began his ministry by attending a wedding and performing his first miracle. Moses' first miracle with his rod was to turn the river Nile's water into blood. Jesus' first miracle was to turn water into wine, a heavenly kind of wine, a wine that humans have not tasted, a wine so different and distinct that the governor, the, the, the master of ceremonies was shocked. In every marriage, like in the Garden of Eden, you got to watch out for the serpent. I guarantee you he's going to come around your marriage. And you have to learn to talk the snake language. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. So, somebody said jokingly, that Satan said to Eve, if you eat this fruit, you'll become like God. And Eve should have answered, well, why don't you eat it? Because you want to become like God. You got to give him the right answer. You got to talk back to the enemy when, when you hear him talking to you. So... <clears throat> It probably was a seven days celebration. They had those. They had three days, seven days weddings. It probably was a long one. And the caterer just couldn't see it. The villages were around 300 people, best historians tell us. So they were like how we used to have a wedding a long time back home. The whole village was invited. Nobody was left out. And so... 
Probably somebody brought their family, right? They, they were just had a lot, of, a lot of people. And the crowd was, must be a hot day. And they were gobbling down wine like water. But Mary noticed. And she came to him and said, They have no wine. Now, distinguish between minding people's business, knowing what they have and what they don't have, distinguish that between knowing their needs, seeing their needs, and telling it to Jesus. That's not gossiping. We have to learn to tell it to Jesus, whether it's your problem or somebody else's problem. Amen. Things will run out, I guarantee you that. Happiness will dry up. Embarrassing moments will come when you will not have enough to supply for your family or for your guest or for your month. Those are embarrassing times. Don't know if you've ever had anybody come to your house and say, look, I'm sorry, I don't have anything to give you to drink. Because I didn't know you were coming. It happens. We run out. And the worst thing to run out is to run out of joy. To run out of happiness. Not things that make you happy, but internal happiness. And so, if you're short on those things, you're really short, shorter than Zacchaeus. And so, situation reported. Now, what I, I find interesting is that Mary couldn't help. She had no power to do anything. But she knew someone who had the power to make a difference. And it is important that you know who to go to when the situation calls for help. I recommend Jesus Christ, the unfailing one, the one who wants to manifest his glory in our lives, the one who wants to show his power and demonstrate heaven's best in your mess. Can somebody say praise God? So... He said, lady, you know, my time is not yet. But, but watch how quickly things change. See, I think Jesus waited a few minutes to let the people be convinced of their need. If they didn't know that they had a need and they wasn't convicted that there was an embarrassing moment present, they may not have valued the miracle as they did. So when God is not, that he's not answering your prayer, he's waiting for you to be convinced that you need help and that only he can give you that help. Isaiah 60, 22 said, I, the Lord, will do it when the time is right. And he will never give you that miracle, although it's lined up for you until the time is right. And I am saying, Lord, make today, Sunday, the right time. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Send us prosperity now. God delights in the blessing and prosperity of his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when things run out, you got to know who to run to. And the best advice I can find in scripture, his mother said to the servants, she's not talking to the big boys. Sometimes the big boys don't understand. They don't, they don't know. They're occupied with politics and they're occupied with the big picture. But the servants, they knew what was going on. And she told them, Whatsoever he says to you, do it. Amen. Maybe God has spoken to you and you're wondering, is this of God? 
If God said to you, give a little extra this Sunday, mm, that could be the devil speaking. If God says to you, go across the aisle and, and shake that brother's hand and give him a little piece of love, nah, I don't think he needs anything. You don't know. If the Lord is speaking to you, do it. I never forget one Wednesday night when I used to be teaching a while before COVID. We had about, you know, 30, 40 people on Wednesday night. And that night, the Lord told me to ask people to give to somebody. Just go to somebody and take out what you have in your pocket and give it to somebody. And everybody was happy with it. It was like a night of exchange from what your pocket. I had $40. And I gave it to somebody. And somebody in the same scenario, somebody put something in my hand and I just put it in my pocket. And when I looked uh, after service, it was $400. You never know. When God tells you to do something, whatsoever he tells you, you go ahead and do it. Because he will back up what he says. He will confirm that he spoke to you in the evidence. In the evidence. Fill it up to the brim. It was ordinary water. God doesn't want you to do the miracle. He'll take your ordinary. What you have. Now tell me where will they find 160 gallons of water in a snap? Water was a scarce commodity. Drinking water. Maybe the synagogue was nearby. And they always have water. But they had to bring the water. Show the second clip if you can. He's talking to the servants. And you can't really see it as he's talking to them. The water coming out from the jar is turning red into the wine. Into wine. Now this is an astounding miracle. Wherever I, <clears throat> I check the scriptures, God always works with something that you have. Find me a miracle that God did that you didn't have a part to play in it. You find me one, whether it's a rod in your hand, a stone, a piece of bread, a serpent, whatever you have, God can take it and turn it around. And he, they had water and he said, that's good enough. I can make something out of this. I can do the extraordinary. I can flip this in a moment. This is the only miracle where it's not recorded that he laid hands on it, that he prayed over it. That he spoke a word. I want to show you that probably mentally. In his mind he said water turn into wine. That's the power of the God we serve. He doesn't have to talk. He just think. And he can think a miracle in the blink of an eye. Hallelujah. So he said take it. And carry it to the wedding planner. See, sometimes we plan, but we don't know what tomorrow holds. And we do really good planning. We cater for everything. But there comes that moment or time or day when some things are going to run out, going to be short. You, especially your temper. That's one of the things that runs out quickly and is very short. And so that's why you need Jesus inside. Now, when the governor tasted it, he said, wait a minute. This thing is backward. Everybody gives the good wine up front. And then they give you the poor class, low class, cheap wine. Just to make up. But, 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 but what, what is this? You have kept the good or the better wine for the last. 
I am telling you that all the good things you have experienced, you really have not come into the fullness of the goodness of God because there are better days coming. There are better things to happen to your life. Now, this is just the beginning of miracles. When you got saved, I'm talking about the beginning. When you got saved, he took you out of the kingdom of darkness and transported you into the kingdom of light. When you got saved at the beginning, he wrote your name. He ex your name out of the book of death and transferred your name into the book of, a, of life. When you got saved, he took you out of Adam and he put you into Christ. When you got saved, he took you out of sin and he put you into holiness. When you got saved, he filled you with the Holy Ghost. He washed you with the blood of the Lamb. You have the Word of God dwelling in you. You have the name of Jesus. Oh, this is just the beginning of miracles. He wants to do more for you. He wants to take your good and make it better. Between the good and the better will one day come the best. And there he manifested his glory. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus For the joy that was set ahead of him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, bringing many sons to glory. From the glory lost to the glory gained, only in Jesus Christ. If you have Jesus in you, the glory is already in you. And this is where inside uh, change on the inside matters because God's going to change you from the inside out. From the moment you receive Jesus, change begins to take place. And you will move from glory to glory to glory until the rapture comes and we find ourselves changed eternally from mortal to immortality, from human to eternal glory. The best is yet to come. If you're having a hard time in your life, the best days are ahead of you, believer. Your past is gone and buried under the blood of Jesus in the sea of forgetfulness. Change is an inside job. Have you been changed since you have been changed? Or are you still the same person, adding a little Sunday here and there? Are you easier to deal with? Can your partner, your family, your household members see change in your life? Can they testify and say, you know, you don't get angry as, you, as fast as you used to. You don't sulk as much as you did. You don't chase people with harsh statements. I notice there is a change in you. Can anybody say that about us? If not, let the glory of God come into our lives and begin to change us. Because if you have not been changed. When the rapture comes, I doubt if you will be changed. We're looking for change. We're looking for change in behavior. We're looking for change in attitude. We're looking for change in church attendance. We can't take it for granted that there might be another Sunday service. You never know what tomorrow holds. 
Work while it is day and the day is now. After the good and the better comes the best. Change is an inside job. We're not talking about taking the bad and making it good. We're talking about taking the good and making it better. Don't just paint the outside pretty and keep the inside ugly. God wants to manifest his glory in your life and in mine. We sang a chorus, and I want to change one line in it. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. I want to change the next few words. Instead of saying bread of heaven, I want you to say wine of heaven, fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Any musicians available? Fill. I give you my key. Remember, remember to change the words. Instead of bread of heaven, say wine of heaven. Fill my. I'm just giving you where, I, where my pitch is. <laughs> KFW. <Key of> <laughs> <Key of> <laughs> If you want your cup filled, feel free to stand. If you want a better tomorrow, feel free to stand. And I will say a prayer for you. Fill cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench. Come and quench this, this thing of my soul. Wine of heaven. Wine of heaven, fill me, fill me till I want, I want no, no more. Fill You see us, we look good on the outside sometimes, but we're not so good on the inside. You want us to be a changed people and a changing people, getting better and better from glory to glory, from strength to strength. Do it today, Lord. Let not tomorrow meet us the same as we were yesterday. Let this word seriously take effect and not let us play church and talk holy and live and walk ungodly I pray for change change the only way we can change a church is by changing ourselves the only way a church can change a community is by the church becoming changed to the glory and the image of God Lord help us to realize the importance of change and being, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things, God help us to get rid of the old thing, the old me, the old ego, the old I, the old me preferring me. Lord, if if any man be in Christ. He's a new 
creation, all things have become new. Make us newer, stronger, wiser, happier, better, richer, smarter, wiser. Oh God, in Jesus' name, I pray for the increase. This is just the beginning of miracles. Continue. I believe and I expect for more miracles this week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.